Hello. If you're able to, please close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Relax your shoulders. Unclench your jaw. Take another deep breath in. And another breath out. You can open your eyes now. My name is David and welcome to Mindful Moments. How are you today? I hope you're well. I am very well, thank you. And I've been going through a period recently where obviously having restarted the podcast, doing a lot more content, posting a lot more, feeling a lot more active. I've been in a period where I've been finding it invigorating being back to doing all the things I usually do but also it's been taking a lot of willpower if I'm being honest to yeah just to get things done and I have realized that when we approach doing things sometimes or when I approach doing things sometimes I just speak for myself when I approach doing things sometimes all I can think of is the long list of things I need to get through to get to my final goal let's say For example, at the moment, I'm having to do exercises every day for my shoulder. As I had a shoulder operation uh, a few months ago. So I think about doing these shoulder exercises and I've actually started to find it a little bit easier to do them in a gym environment rather, rather than at home, just to make sure that I'm in kind of the mind frame to do it. I think about going to the gym and I think going to the gym means I've got to get my stuff together change, go to the gym. When I finish with the gym, I have to shower, have to eat something to make sure the gym work doesn't go to waste. And I've been thinking about that kind of thing a lot. And I've been thinking how when you approach an end goal, sometimes all you can think of is the list of things that you need to do to get there. But sometimes it's not, or rather not sometimes, the adjustment in thinking that I have around that is that it's not a list of tasks it's a row of dominoes have you ever seen those videos of really elaborate domino displays where someone has spent hours setting up dominoes knocks one over and they all knock over one by one and eventually at the end when everything's fallen into place displays like a marvelous piece of artwork or something like that i used to love watching those videos when i was younger because a the patience to set that all that up in the first place incredible b just the vision to see that once all these dominoes have fallen, they'll form this picture is incredible. I can't really contemplate being able to see that, but artists are incredible. Anyway, sometimes when approaching the things I need to do, rather than seeing all the things I need to do as a list of tasks, I like to see them as a row of dominoes because once I knock one over, it helps me to knock the next one over and the next one and the next one until all the tasks are completed and everything is falling into place. And that's the mindset of the analogy that's really helped me get through things at the moment. It's interesting because whenever we do something that we don't necessarily want to do or that we find difficult to do, or whenever we complete a task towards a bigger goal, every small task has its contribution, but equally, every small task helps us to build up momentum. As I said, when I go and do these shoulder exercises now, Sometimes I'll go to the gym to do them just so I'm more in kind of that environment. And the first, it's almost like the first task is getting dressed to go to the gym. The second task is leaving to go to the gym. The third task is actually arriving. And by the time I'm there, I've almost built up a little bit of momentum where it's like, right, now this doesn't feel quite as difficult as it did starting from cold. And that's obviously a movement based example, but I feel like that applies in a lot of areas, even in terms of getting up to record this podcast today. Have you ever heard of the one, two, three method? It's something where basically when you, you find yourself procrastinating, you find yourself spiraling and thinking of all the things you need to do and it, it, it 
makes you feel paralyzed and makes you feel like you can't get up and do what you need to do. You literally just count one, two, three and stand up on three and just move to do whatever you're going to do. Just interrupt the train of thoughts that's stopping you doing what you need to do. Count one, two, three and on three, just stand up and go and start dealing with whatever you're doing. And all these things are things to just basically build a momentum and help you move towards and do the things that you need to do. And that's essentially what kind of the domino theory that I think of makes me do. It makes me think, right, once you've done this one thing, then the next thing follows, then the next thing follows, then the next thing follows. It's like household chores, for example. I'm in charge of the washing up. I do the washing up. And I wouldn't say I particularly enjoy it, but it needs to be done. And also, I, 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 I do think of the washing up positively because washing up means that I've eaten. To eat is, is, a, is, a, is a joy and a privilege. So I'm always happy to have had a nourishing meal in the day. So when I think of doing the washing up, I will think one, two, three and stand up and go to the sink. But once I've gone to the sink and I turn the tap on, if the tap is on, I'm going to put soap on the sponge. If there's soap on the sponge, I'm going to use the sponge on the plate. And if I'm using the sponge on the plate, then I'm going to rinse it. If I'm going to rinse it, then I'm going to, then I'm going to put it in the drying rack to dry. And all these tasks don't just stand alone. They all feed into each other. Each one knocks the next one down until everything has fallen into place. Rather than a list of things that I needed to do to get that job done, each task was a domino that knocks the next one over until everything is completed. And the really nice thing about viewing things like that is that it feels like every piece of effort builds towards something rather than drains me or takes something away from me. It feels like every time I manage to sum up or what's what I'm looking for? Yeah, every time I, every time I manage to bring up the effort to do something, it contributes towards something rather than taking away from me until the bigger picture is built. And that works on the smallest level from doing the washing up to the biggest level. Things like when I was at university getting my degree, every essay was building towards my final grade. And once I've done this essay and I've done this task and I've done this task and I did, I've, done this, I've done this task, the next one follows because I built up a rhythm, I built up momentum, I've done the last thing, so I might as well do the next thing. I think as well, when you get through difficult things, one of the, one of the ways that I am always managing to get the next difficult thing done is remembering the last difficult thing. I think there's no better feeling than going through something difficult, making it through something difficult, and being able to feel the pride of that thing was really difficult, but I did it anyway. Because that creates a bedrock of examples that means that the next time a difficult thing comes along, you always have something to compare back to. This is difficult, but that was difficult. I managed to do that. That was one of my big reasons for doing 75 hard last year. I really felt if I do this, then I'm actually going to feel like there's nothing I can't do, which turned out to be kind of true. When we do difficult things, I, mean, I don't particularly enjoy doing difficult things. So there has to be some benefit to them. And the benefit isn't just having completed the difficult thing. It's in then earning that example for myself of a difficult thing I made it through. And when I've earned that for myself, that's mine to do with as I please. I can revel in my past difficulties and look back to them whenever I need to draw strength from them, knowing that that thing was difficult and I did it then. So if this thing is difficult, I can do it now. And it also really helps me to discern between, to discern between, it also really helps me to discern between can't and won't. I'd say maybe, <laughs> maybe 90% of the time, maybe 95, maybe 99, when I feel like I can't do something, it's because I don't want to do something, which is fair. I shouldn't want to do everything all the time. But knowing the difference is important. Not because when I recognize the difference, I must then always do it. Sometimes I don't want to do something and I'm capable of doing it. I just don't want to. And I still will not do it even though I could, because I'm not, I wasn't put here to constantly be productive and prove my worth and make sure that I'm always doing something that contributes to something. I'm not. Sometimes I don't want to do it, so I won't do it. But it's very important for me to know that 
I'm not doing this thing because I don't want to do it. Not tell myself, oh, I couldn't have done it anyway. Because yeah, being honest with ourselves is important and is the only way if I really want to grow, I really want to be the best version of myself and be the best person I can be. I know I need to be able to be honest with myself. So knowing the difference between can't and won't is important for that because sometimes I won't do things, not because I can't, but because I don't want to. And it's important for me to acknowledge when I don't want to and when I'm doing something because I don't want to or when I'm not doing something because I don't want to. It's also important for me to know that difference to be able to do the things I need to do because sometimes I could easily give myself an excuse or give myself a reason why I'm not doing this thing and know in my heart of hearts it's because I didn't really want to. And it's important that when I feel that about something that I should do and can do, that I know how to get over that and say, okay, no, you should do this, you can do this, you don't want to, but how you feel isn't as important as what needs to be done right now. I feel like I fall on the right side of that most of the time. But it's hard to, which is why I like to think of my obstacles as dominoes. Every obstacle to me doing the things I need to do, everything that seems to stand in my way is actually part of the process and will help the next thing. If I manage to walk, knock over one task, if I manage to complete one task, if I manage to knock over one domino, it will knock the next and the next and the next. And before I know it, everything would have fallen into place. So if there's something difficult you are facing at the moment, if there's a bigger goal you're building towards, even if it's on the smallest of scales, if in, on a day-to-day -day basis, you're finding it difficult to get through small tasks, maybe give it a try. Break it down into the minute, these are all the things that need to be done for this to be completed. And then stand all those small tasks up and see them as dominoes rather than obstacles. You can do each of those one things. And the good thing is when we have a really big, difficult thing that we want to complete or something that feels big and difficult that we want to complete, and there are loads of small tasks along the way that we need to do to complete it, it feels like oh, I've got to do all these things. And when you think of all those things, it feels daunting because it feels like you need to tackle all of them at once. But really, we only, never, we only ever need to do one of those things at a time. It feels daunting because you see them all at once. You see them all as one big thing. And it feels like I had to tackle all of this. But you don't have to tackle all of them at once. You just need to do one thing at a time and let the dominoes knock each other over. You can do it. I can do it. We can do it. We got this. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Whatever you're doing this week, I hope you have a wonderful one.